POC version 11 is going to be activated on 4th of October 2021 and it is coming with an upgraded proof of coverage algorithm. To make sure that you are not impacted by this new anti-claiming protocol, you have to update the antenna parameters on your Helium app. In this video, we will discuss in detail how to calculate the right parameters and the effect of using incorrect values. Hey folks, this is Roy and welcome back to my channel, Eigentech. As I have mentioned in my last video that the transmitted power of your helium miner might get reduced depending on the local regulation and the gain of your antenna. So that brings in the important question that which antenna now you should use after the activation of POCV11. In order to understand that, we first need to learn how this transmitted power is calculated. And for that, one important term is EIRP, which stands for Effective Isotropic Radiated Power. I have mentioned in my antenna video that uh, an, a hypothetical antenna which radiates all its energy uniformly in all directions is called isotropic antenna it is also said to have 0 dBi of gain. However, a real antenna which will have some large gain will not radiate power uniformly in all directions. Instead, it will send some power uh, strongly in some direction and weakly in other directions. So EIRP is asking the question how much power an isotropic antenna would need to transmit the same power in the direction of maximum gain and this picture is trying to show you that. So the bottom line is you can calculate EIRP using this expression where PT is the transmitted power, G is the gain of your antenna and LC is the loss of your cable. So let us now check EIRP for different regions or different countries. The first one is USA. And uh, this column is showing you the frequency used by the helium miners for USA, Europe, Australia, Asia, India, Korea and other countries. And this column is showing you the maximum power typical helium miners are capable of uh, radiating. So for USA it's usually 27 dBm, for Europe 12 dBm, Australia 27 and so on. And this is the number of maximum EIRP which comes from local regulation. For USA is 36.0, uh, for Europe it's 16.1, Australia 30 and so on. So you can see that USA has the highest uh, EIRP, then Australia and India and most of the Asian countries have lower EIRP. Then the maximum antenna gain that you can use before the transmitted power is reduced, so that's an important point, is simply the difference of maximum EIRP and maximum minor power. So for USA, it will be about 9 dBi, for Europe 4.1 and so on. But it doesn't mean that, for example, here for India, the maximum antenna gain is 3 dBi. It doesn't mean that you cannot use 6 dBi antenna, you can still use and I will explain that later in the following slides. Also note that I don't know the maximum power radiated by the miners in China and Russia, but it will be somewhat similar most likely. For USA, the, as you saw that maximum EIRP is the highest 36 and that allows you to use an antenna with 9 dBi gain. So uh, this POC version 11 implementation will have almost no effect on the maximum transmitted power for the helium miners in the USA because in most cases you don't need to use an antenna larger than 9 dBi gain. So let us now try to understand how transmitted power will be calculated. So on the leftmost column I have shown uh, different uh, gain for the antennas. This is the example with the consideration that the maximum EIRP is 30 dB and the maximum hardware limit that the, that the value of power your hardware is capable of transmitting is 27 dBm. So we know that the allowed transmission power will be the difference of maximum EIRP and the antenna gain. So in this case it will be 29 dBm for antenna gain of 2 to be 28 and so on. However, even though 29 dBm of power is allowed for 1 dBi of antenna gain, since your hardware limit is 27 dBm, in this case, the actual power that will be sent is only going to be 27 dBm. Similarly, for 2 dBi allowed is 28, uh, it will be hardware limit 27, for 3, 27, 27. But uh, 3 dBi onwards, for 4 dBi, the allowed transmission power is reduced to 26. So even though you are now capable of sending 27 dBm of power to, to meet the local regulations, 
the transmitted power will be reduced to 26. So similarly for 9 dBA, allowed transmission power is 21 dBm and the actual transmitted power will also be 21 dBm. So this is how the transmitted power is calculated. But that does it mean that you should always use the antenna gain such that the allowed transmission power is the maximum. Antenna choice is still based on your height of your antenna and the surroundings. So where you live like in a city or urban area. And I have covered this topic in another video. You'll find the link in the description as well as in the top right corner. So using the best antenna depending on your location and your target audience will still stay the same. Okay. So this reduction of power is only to uh, meet the local regulations of transmitted power. So the next question is how to update the antenna information. For that you have to log into your Helium app and click on the gear icon and then you will find an option to update the hotspot information. So here you have antenna height details. So height could be any number. So because in POC V11 height is not going to be used. So it could be just a rough number. If you are in a plain area, it could be just the height from the ground. If you are in a hilly area, you can roughly have a estimate of your antenna height from the surrounding flat area. Okay, but it's not going to be used. It's just an indication of how high your antenna is. So the important number is going to be this transmission and receiving gain. For that, for to update this in for any of the transmission or receiving gain or height, you have to pay a fee of 55,000 DC, which is equivalent to 55 cents. So the main question is what value should you choose for transmission and receiving gain? So the main important point is that you can subtract the cable and connector loss. So this is allowed. Okay. So I have looked up uh, typical specifications and I found that the LMR 400 cable has usually a 4 dB loss per 100 feet. LMR 600 cable which is slightly better has a loss of about 2.5 dB per 100 feet but you will get the accurate information from the data sheet uh, from the manufacturer or seller. Now one important one is that this loss is uh, linear in dB unit but that means that if you are using uh, instead of 100 feet you are using 50 feet the loss will be simply 2 dB so divide that by 2 if you are using only 10 feet the loss will be 10 times less in dB unit so it's very easy to calculate. Also, you can consider that the connectors which come with the cables has a loss of about 0.1 dB per pair, which means whenever you mate one male with female connector, you can consider there will be a loss of 0.1 dB. So usually there will be two connections if you are using a single cable. So that last loss will be about 0.2 dB. So you can add 0.2 dB with the loss of the cable calculated from this number or the data sheet. And then you can subtract that number from the gain. So let's say you are using an antenna gain antenna of uh, 9 dBi. The total loss will be 2 dB and 0.2 dB from the 2 dB from the cable and 0.2 dB from the connector. So 2.2 dB. So your gain was 9 dBi and you subtract 2.2 dBi from that that will be 6.8 dBi. So in that case we'll enter 6.8 dBi here. Also note that uh, the step size of power that the helium uses is only 1 dBm which means uh, if your calculation says that transmitted power is going to be 26.1 dBm it's going to use 26. So similarly 26.7 dBm will be rounded to 27 dBm of power. Now helium doesn't know what antenna you are going to use. You, you are responsible for setting the gain using the helium app. And the number will be in between 1 and 15 dBi with steps of 1 dB. Now the question is, can you falsify this information, right? Because it's, you have the freedom, can you do that? So actually you can, but there could be a negative impact. So let us see what will happen if you use incorrect parameters while updating the antenna information. So we'll first try to understand the effect of setting a lower gain. So we have a high gain antenna, but in the app you set a lower gain value. So what will happen in that case? To understand that, uh, one term which is important is the FSPL, which stands for free space path loss. And in my POC V11 update video, I have talked in detail how this thing is calculated. So you'll find the link in the description as well as at the top right corner. So in the end, the FSPL has this expression where uh, D is in distance in kilometer and F is the frequency in megahertz. GT is the gain of your transmitted 
antenna and GR is the gain of the uh, antenna on the receiver side. And the transmitted power on the receiver side is basically transmitted power on the transmitter side minus the FSPL. So let's take an example. Let's say um, the transmitter, the actual gain of the transmitter is 8 dBi. However, that person sets the transmission, uh, the gain to be only 3 dBi. And for certain distance, uh, let's say the FSPL is, uh, should be 110. However, since the gain is set to be 3, 5 dB less than the actual value, the FSPL will be computed to be 115. As a result, if the transmitted power is 27 dBm, the actual received power will be minus 83 dBm or this is also called as RSSI. However, the expected value of the transmitted power or the received power will be minus 88 dBm. Now you see there is a problem here. The actual value is stronger than the expected value. So as I showed you in the previous video, this is not allowed by physics. So one cannot have a stronger value than the theoretically computed value and as a result, these witness will be become invalid. In particular, you will get, you'll get an error message which says witness RSSI too high. So you can see as a result of uh, setting incorrect gain, in particular setting a lower gain, you got invalid witnesses. So setting a lower gain has pros and cons. The pros is that uh, it will have higher range because your uh, transmitted power will not be clipped or will not be reduced. So your signal will cover more distance, reach further out and you have a chance of getting more witnesses. However, the con is that uh, you have a more chance of getting invalid witnesses because you set the antenna gain incorrectly. So next check what will happen if you do the opposite. So you set a gain value which is higher than the actual gain that you are using. For example, let's say you have a 3 dBi antenna and you are setting it to be 8 dBi. So what will happen in that case? So as I showed you earlier, the FSPL calculated for these three, two cases will be 115 and 110. So in this case, let's say the maximum RP was 30 dBm. So your transmitted power will be reduced to 22 dBm instead of 27 dBm. That's the difference between a maximum EIRP which is 30 and the set value which is 8 dBi in this case. So 22 dBm will be the transmitted power. As a result, the actual received power because of the path loss will be minus 93 dBm which is basically this power, transmitted power minus the path loss. And the expected value is minus 88. Now there is no problem here because the expected value is larger than the actual power. So this will be a valid witness. So there is no problem uh, in setting a gain which is higher than the actual value. This might have some advantage is that you have now some room because if some other hotspot in your vicinity forgets to update their antenna information and uses a higher DVI gain antenna, uh, in that case you have some room to obtain valid witnesses because the RSSI value will be still uh, in the valid zone. So the pro is that you have more chance of getting valid witnesses, uh, in particular it will be useful for close by hotspots. However, the con is uh, you will have lower range because now the transmitted power will be lowered uh, depending on the value of the gain and it will have as a result less weaknesses. So you can see in both cases when you set the gain value to be higher or lower than the actual value, you have problems. So it is best to use the right number. By right number, I mean the actual gain and then you subtract the loss of from your cable and connector from the actual gain and use that number to enter in the Helium app. So to summarize, the choice of your antenna still remains the same. It is mainly based on your height of your antenna and the topography around yours as I have explained in my earlier video. To update the gain information, you can always subtract the cable loss and the connector loss from the gain of the antenna. For the height, it's not that important. So you can always use a, uh, you can just use a rough number for the height of your antenna. And to update this information, you have to pay 55 cents, which will be directly deducted from the HNT in your wallet. I hope this information was useful to you. If you have any more question, let me know in the comment section. That's all for today. Thanks for watching guys and get cryptonized.